Okay, before you watch this video, two things that everybody needs to know. First of all, all of these are recorded and edited at least a day or two in advance, some of them even more. And any changes that occur between recording and uploading, those I will discuss in the first episode of WNBA Weekly. If someone gets hurt during preseason, odds are I'm going to miss it by like an hour or so. And then I will talk about that on May 13th when I upload the first episode of the season. Second of all, I am not in any way associated with the WNBA or any of their sponsors or affiliates. I am not part of the Associated Press. I'm just a guy who loves basketball and wants to talk about the game that I love. So, yeah, all of these are just my own personal opinions based on the observations that I've made. I do take into account some of the things that the media and players and other people will say, but at the end of the day, these are my opinions. So if I happen to say something negative about one of your favorite teams, deal with it. Greetings and welcome to The Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Nile and these are the 2017 preseason power rankings where I look at all the moves that a team made during the offseason, free agency, and what draft and whatnot, and try to determine where I think they will finish at the end of the regular season, how many wins I think they will have. And at number 10 I have selected... The biggest change to the Indiana Fever organization is Tamika Catchings is retired. And I have never seen a WNBA where Tamika Catchings was not playing. I mean, I'm not, not counting the time when she was injured, but that happens to everybody. I mean, Tamika Catchings is gone. She's been a staple not only of the franchise, but of this league for so damn long. And she was a five-time defensive player of the year. I mean, forget about every other stat. Let's just look at that. You know, the huge impact she had. Even at her old age, she could still pad a stat sheet. Now, there were times last year where she would still get 14 points, 8 rebounds, 6 assists, 3 steals, 3 blocks. That's just a normal day for her. They also lost their head coach, Stephanie White, but they picked up Pokey Chapman, who is definitely has a very respectable coaching record. You got, they traded away Lynette Kaiser to bring in a veteran with championship experience in Candace Tupree. That definitely bolsters their front court. I have the same questions with this team that I have with the Atlanta team. You know, how are they going to make up for this huge hole that has to be filled? Because I don't know if there is one single individual who can make up for all the different things that Tamika Catching brings to the table. But I have a slightly more confidence in them because I can see where the talent is better distributed. You know, Pokey is new there, so it might not be an immediate perfect fit where everything just gels right away learning this new system. You know, she's still learning about her players and stuff. But I think they are still capable of gelling well together, and they've got a lot of talent. They've got talent there. Beyond January, when she's healthy, she's a great all-around playmaker, you know, a perfect leader at the point guard spot. You know, great scorer, good distributor, great on-the-ball defender. She's amazing. And a lot of people are looking at her to step up. You've got people like Candice Tabree, Alana Larkins, championship experience, that great mentality that the Fever franchise has been known for. You've got a young girl in Tiffany Mitchell who, you know, she she was if, if she wasn't in the same draft class as Brianna Stewart, she had a legitimate shot of getting hit of uh, Rookie of the Year. For me personally, when I was watching the Fever last year, nothing about them ever really blew me out of the water. You know, it's not like they're winning every game by 20 points. So many, they had so many close contests, so many down to the wire things. They win games by either holding opponents low or taking care of some very shitty defenses. I'm not saying I necessarily expect them to miss the playoffs, but it is a tough league. And that absence of Tamika Catchings on the floor, you know, that, that general, that leader, that playmaker, I think it'll have just enough of an impact because the Fever is a team that they have struggled in recent years. And so now you take away the best player on the roster, I, I think it just, it feels to me like that it's just enough of a drop off that they might possibly fail to make the playoffs. I wouldn't be shocked if they did, I wouldn't be shocked if they didn't. 
Honestly, I'm not even that sold on them as number 10. Like for me, 9, 10, and 11, they're all interchangeable. Like 12 sits all alone as the worst, but 11, 10, 9, maybe even 8. They all, they all it could, it's basically a flip a coin to see who would win those matchups. So yeah, basic assessment, I think they have a good team. It wouldn't shock me to see them putting together a bunch of wins and sneaking in with a low playoff bug. But it also wouldn't shock me to see them lose a bunch of close games against the higher tier teams and just barely miss out by like half a game or because of a tiebreaker. For me, this team is the definition of on the fence. They've got the talent to be great. On paper, they look amazing. But come game time, will that actually translate to wins? Will they actually be able to pick up put up points? Will their defense still be able to dominate? So that's it for this segment. Tune in tomorrow where we talk about the ninth ranked team, the last of the non-playoff teams. We finish, we round out the lottery picks for next year. And until then, uh, this has been the Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lyle. Hope you have a great day.